folks, a big question we get all the time anymore is about these plasma spray bore stuff. You know, like the Ford Coyote. I mean, heck, Ed, I mean, there's Nissan, Mercedes, Audi, Porsche, Porsche yeah, yeah. BMW. Yeah, a bunch of them are using a plasma spray bore. So, Ed, explain a little bit what the difference between a plasma spray, what is a plasma spray bore, and how is that different from our regular old cast iron sleeve like we have in here? Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question, you know, so it's applied, you, you know, you'll put a cylinder or a block in, mm -hmm. a, in an actual machine, and mm -hmm. you've got a wand that goes down through there as everything rotates, mm -hmm. and it applies the metal in a, it's really a, like a spray well. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so, so it applies the metal to the board. Typically what you'll do is, is you'll, you'll bore it depending on where you want to be mm -hmm. you might bore the cylinder out 20 thousandths and then you spray it up to 40 thousandths okay and then you hone out to, to whatever size you want right so here describe this little sleeve right here right yep. so for this traditional iron sleeve cast iron sleeve right and that can go in either an iron block or an aluminum iron block. block now the plasma spray bore is typically being done in aluminum block engines typically now you can do it in an iron block absolutely engine. Um, one of the really neat things about that spray process is that it creates porosity. Absolutely, yes. And that's kind of the key to the honing difference, right? Which is yes. why we're standing next to the Rottler, uh, which is H85, right? Or yes. H80 hone. Yep. So H80 hone, because you're going to hone that plasma spray bore cylinder completely differently than you would one of these a standard cast iron bore absolutely you know when we're when we're using cast iron bores we're mm -hmm. trying to uh, apply or create the rvk right the, the valley deep, the valleys the deep grooves mm -hmm. where the oil lays helps the sealing process with a with a spray board mm -hmm. cylinder we don't have to do that in fact uh, it's a completely different process and right a, and a step-by-step Deal. We're actually using up to a 1200 grit diamond mm -hmm. uh, to get a very smooth finish because we already have the RVK in there from the porosity of the spray board. Exactly. So those those pores they're plot are created by that that process. They hold the oil. So you don't need those valleys that right. we're trying to create with our traditional abrasive. So you mentioned 1200 grit diamond. So I know like we did the Engine Performance Expo LS block. Yep. We used a 170 200 diamond right. and then plateaued over that with 600 CVN. Right. And you just said you're going to finish with a 1200. With a 1200, yes. Yep. Yep. And one of the reasons is, is, is the, the uh, rather it be you know the spray board mm -hmm. or, or even a even really a nicosil coating you know it's mm -hmm. there's so it's such a hard material or a, a right. surface mm -hmm. that we want a really smooth finish for the rings we don't want to wear our rings out that's a good point the, the plasma spray board is very hard yes similar to nicosil uh, so that if it's really rough it's a cutting tool and it's going to kill your piston rings and we don't want you killing your piston rings this is not a good day no you know i know for example like my car the wombat it has nicosil or actually uh, sumo bore cylinders in it, in it right so charles and navarro and jake and those guys at ln and, and raby uh, enterprises you know they are investigating that's why these cylinders are for these that's are air-cooled porsche cylinders so the first generation of that testing was actually done in my car, car where we took a water-cooled Porsche engine which would normally be Nicosil right but we as opposed to using Nicosil we're exploring using Sumabor yep. and yeah that, that engine's got 10,000 plus miles on it doing street use and things like that it was amazing we did the first teardown at 5,000 miles I mean nothing I mean nothing. it's Nowhere nothing it's just nothing right it does you, you in this mirror finish looking like that it, yep. it's crazy yes and it just doesn't wear I have a, a, a just a quick story. I have a gentleman up and he's an engineer for Dana. Mm -hmm. They are into pulling trucks. Okay. And so he decided he wanted a big bore motor. So he went and bought two square pieces of 4340 steel, 1,700 pounds a piece. Okay. He carved out two engine blocks predicated on like a big block Chevrolet. Right. 4750 bore. Okay. Okay. And he sumi bore coated it. Okay. And they, they unfortunately, and he'll tell you this story is, is on the dyno they forgot to put a couple of restrictors in and uh, lost oil pressure and blew the thing oh. up. Okay, but the cool thing about that was, is, is they got in there, honed that uh, sumi bore out, 
stick welded the the, the, the gouge out, yeah. sent it out, had it re sumi board in that one cylinder. I honed it again. They've been running that motor now for four years, five years. Oh wow! And all they do is at the end of the season they'll stick that maybe that 1200 grid in there and go up and down a few times, and you're golden. Okay, so that's a really great great point. So let's say someone watching is. Um, they, they've got a Coyote or an Audi or, or whatever that has this factory applied spray bore. Because there's this is Suma Bore, which is from uh, Orlicon Medco. Um, but there's other companies that have yes. similar process. Yeah. Yeah. And so they all kind of end up as the same thing. Yeah. So what are some th do's and don'ts for someone that's thinking about rebuilding, rehoning their engine that has a plasma spray bore? Yeah. The first thing is, is you know, you don't want to be touching this with a 400, a 300 grit, or a 400 grit, or any type okay. of abrasive that's going to remove a lot of material because it, it's a it's a sprayed on coating. It's you know? very it's, thin. It's very thin, and, and uh, depending on where they started mm -hmm. and what the bore diameter ends up being, I mean, you could have five thousandths of coating per side on that. On right, that. and uh, so so you're not going to go ten over. No, you're not going five over ten. <laughs> right, exactly. That's a that's a great point. Yeah, you're yes. typically not going to go no. five over or ten over. You're not boring it out. You're talking about taking the same cylinder size, yes. cleaning it up essentially, yeah. and like you said, a twelve hundred grit abrasive right. at say ten strokes isn't going to remove no you hardly any material. It, you won't measure it at ten strokes. Right, you won't measure the material you're taking out. You know, and I think. Even uh, even some of the guys in the in the cup series, mm -hmm. you, you know, I think you know you're talking about oversizes of one thousandths. There you go, or two thousandths. Right. Sumi bore is a unique process, not, mm -hmm. not a, but it's a unique material. And, right. And, exactly. Uh, it uh, you know, it's pretty intriguing. It's some pretty neat stuff. Well, one really cool thing about it is because of that twelve hundred grit finish, it is so flat on top. It creates these perfect plateaus yes. that have these little deep valleys to hold the oil. The bearing ratio, right? Talk about that, that Abbott Firestone curve, the MR1, MR2. It's incredible. Oh, it's unreal. I mean, yes. we'll, we'll show you guys some examples of you know what a sumo bore cylinder looks like versus the traditional uh, cast iron cylinder, and you're going to see that that cast iron cylinder looks like <laughs> the Rocky Mountains, whereas this stuff looks like an Arizona Mesa plateau. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing it, it the is. difference. Yes, and, and honestly, if you'll compare the Abbott Firestone curve mm -hmm. to a cast iron bore versus mm -hmm. a sumi bore. Uh, you know, you'll you'll see a huge difference in that. Right. In, in the in the slant of the of the curve, mm -hmm. there's really not much slant in that, in that Firestone <laughs> it's curve. It's pretty much flat when, when you've got this sumi bore. It's right. really uh, it's uh, pretty you know pretty eye opening. Well, like I said it gives you. There's no wear. Well, exactly. Because it doesn't have a lot of grit or a lot of tooth right. to to cause anywhere. Right. It's got plenty of area to support the load. Yep. Uh, plus, it's got enough valley. Yep. To hold so the oil, it's lubricate. very that yep. porous and surface seal. acts like a sun, sponge, so it right. it can seal. So, so the, I guess the, the 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 takeaways from this are that as a new sprayed piece, there's a different process, right? You're going to yes. use like a 325 and yes. get close to size, and then yes. go to 600, yep. and then go finish with the 1200. Yep. Uh, these are all diamonds. You have to use them hard like that, yes. Because it's so hard you can't cut it with a traditional yeah, abrasive, you, 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 you're or you'll gonna, struggle yeah, with a yeah, traditional you're gonna, abrasive. You're going to rub on it a long time with a standard abrasive. Right. Uh, and yes, you're absolutely right. It's a different process. So typically, what we're going to do here is we're going to take ten thousands total out. Okay. So we're going to use a, a three twenty five four hundred grit diamond to what we'll call rough the cylinders okay. within probably four. Okay. Then we're going to take two to three thousandths out with a six hundred grit diamond. Okay. And then we're going to step up to our twelve hundred grit diamond. To get down to what we call base finish, okay, and and the, the finish that you're looking for for the rings and all on on a sumi bore coated or a spray bore coated cylinder. All right, cool. And we got this cool little fixture here that Embry and the guys here at CNC Blockworks uh, made for us to be able to hold those cylinders in there because yep. we're not as a modular cylinder, it doesn't have a block to hold it in right now. So this is a pretty neat little piece. And 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 that brings up a, a, another great point is is. You know, you're looking at an aluminum cylinder here, and, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if you can see how thin we'll call the spigot area of this right. is, and this creates a tremendous problem to hone. You know, it, it because it wants to breathe. 
Right. And, and this is common on every air-cooled engine, yes. right? <laughs> not every, Porsche, no, not Volkswagen. No, 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 We're talking no, no, no. Harleys, yes. everything that's yeah, air-cooled. That's right. They all have the same they, problem. They all have the same problem. And the other thing you're going to find is, is, you know, you have to be able to clamp this piece to hone it. Otherwise, right. it'll spin in the fixture. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't, if, if you don't create an even clamp load, what happens mm -hmm. is is you will distort these bores. Right. And 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 some of them are, are th th these, you know, they're made by L and M much but they're Good. they're a, a high quality piece here. Right. Okay. And and you don't get near the distortion. But I've seen some of the standard old air cooled Porsche cylinders that I can grab with my hand and, and just squeeze and distort them two thousands. Ooh, that's bad. So, so it's, it's really... Neither you know, straight nor round at that point. Yeah, neither straight nor round is for sure. And so when you clamp them in there, I've literally, once you unclamp them, mm -hmm. or untorque them, I right. should say, yep. there are spots in there you can't even read with a dot board gauge. It, it, I've seen Ooh. them five, six thousandths out of round. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a, so that's some blow by there. Super important when you're doing this sort of stuff to have the clamp fixture that mimics how they bolt into the an engine. engine. Right there okay. you go. Torque plates or, or whatever you want to call them. Super critical on stuff like this. In fact, I, I don't think you can get by without it. Oh, exactly. Yeah, it's it's having the proper fixturing. Like I said, it's just like a torque plate for a larger engine to replicate that clamp load yes. so that you get the proper distortion then you're honing to right. fit that to a way that it's actually round and straight in the engine as assembled so you get the proper ring seal and proper engine performance. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you know, you go to, to great lengths to make your rings round. Oh, yes. And we go to great lengths to hone these cylinders round. But when you release them, they're anything <laughs> but round. <laughs> exactly. So, so, yeah. So it's kind of neat to see how shiny this is yeah. and how they're, like you said, there's really no crosshatch to this versus we have a cross hatch in a traditional cylinder to get that oil movement hold up and that down, oil. hold that oil. But here you really don't have that. Yep. It looks very different. Yeah, very. There, there is a slight. You can see a slight cross hatch in mm -hmm. there, but it's a very shallow one. Right. Because again, we have the porosity that holds the oil, so right. we don't need it. That's perfect. So anyway, hope this little video gives everybody a little bit of insight and some do's and don'ts. If you're starting with a as you know, sprayed cylinder that's brand new, then hey, there's a process to it. If you already have a block that's already been sprayed and already been honed, and you're just wanting to refinish it, there's a different technique. Keep that in mind because you don't want to overbore it and destroy no. it because no. this right. is a pretty good material. You want to take advantage of it. So, hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. He told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen.